in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed and tonight you have brought us to grant us access to wisdom to empower us and to turn us into signs and wonders Lord we submit to your wisdom and we cry in the name of Jesus the son of the risen king that tonight you will bless us in no small way open our eyes grant us illumination in the name of Jesus Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back home. Hallelujah. Um, very quickly, let me welcome all who are worshiping with us for the first time. Inside, outside, online. This is your first time worshiping with us tonight. Please, wherever you are, I'd like you to stand up on your feet. Just, just stand very gallantly. God bless you, Koinonia. Let's celebrate them celebrate them hallelujah praise the name of the lord hallelujah please let me have one of the cards on behalf of jesus christ himself come i salute every one of you and thank you so much for making our time to come this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international it's worth clapping my dear I don't feel embarrassed Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're here Fridays and God is helping us. Even as you've experienced and you will yet experience tonight. I guarantee you that your life will never be the same. Many of you have traveled from several regions uh, within and outside this nation. The Lord will not disappoint you. Um, there are officials standing at your left or right. They would give you a card that looks like this. The upper part is for your consumption. You can have that part. It contains details about the ministry. Please do make our time to go through it. The second half uh, would require you filling it. Please do well to complete it legibly. You can do that as soon as you are seated when we're done praying for you. And then they will collect it. You wave it and then they will come and pick it up. Um, it just helps us to follow you up and then to be able to reach you praise the name of the lord we're going to pray for you and it is the greatest gift we can give you on this day to speak words of blessings over your life the lord has anointed us and our words are not empty stretch your hands saints of god and let's bless them we decree and declare that the blessings of heaven rest upon you you go from glory to glory grace to grace every limitation in your life will be swallowed up tonight the hand of god is mighty upon you go from glory to glory we bless you with hunger for spiritual things we pray that every challenge you came here with in the name of jesus it will crumble like the wall of jericho i decree and declare that you are blessed you remain blessed you remain lifted in jesus name i pray amen god bless you and please be seated hallelujah let me start tonight by i just i just thought in my heart to do this to truly appreciate every one of us um, and even our family outside of this localized region we're a global family truly and you cannot believe the level of cohesion that although we are far from one another i'm sure that the future will provide meetings that will make you see the other side of this family it's very large we constitute a minute fraction of the stretch that god has provided and we're honored to 
be part of what he's doing so i really want to appreciate everyone the love support i just wrote a few things down here and i'm looking at them and your prayers um i think it was last week a dear gentleman from sweden now people sow and give but he did something that i i told him that i was going to appreciate him publicly um i had met him once uh, when he um, i was to see him and a former ambassador to rwanda and then he went back to sweden and bought 1,000 shares for the ministry. And this is, is, now, now he's, he's not the only one, believe me. There are literally thousands of people committing seeds, sacrifices, even over a project. Uh, I'm, I'm yet to even speak about it. And, and several people across, um, Apostle, just let us know what we can do. This is how you know that the favor of God is upon you and when people go that far to honor you you must not take them for granted praise the Lord so we really appreciate everyone um, thank you so so much praise the name of the Lord happy Valentine <laughs> you know while while I was coming I was just thinking wondering what many of you would think I'll be sharing tonight You will be surprised I will teach on rapture. <laughs> What's wrong with teaching on rapture? Hallelujah. I, I trust that won't, won't take long tonight, but I truly thought about what the Lord will have me share, and I've been passionate about imparting wisdom. This for me is the most important thing in this season. The impartation of wisdom. The faculty of knowing what to do. And I thought to just honor today by sharing with us um, three priorities in life. I think I would call them the most important priorities in our lives the three most important priorities hallelujah is a strong charge but I trust that it will grant us wisdom um, it is very important please look up now it is very important that our days be spent in wisdom just because we are given the gift of time does not mean that as time passes we are making the most of our destinies are we together 200 years ago there was almost no one on earth today that is on earth today if christ tarries 200 years after now then most probably maybe maybe just a few people if at all and so it means that we're in the middle of a time frame that must be utilized with wisdom. Are we together? And um, I thank God for a dimension of philosophical approach that he's given me as far as interpreting life is concerned. It's been beneficial to my life and I trust that God will bless us tonight in Jesus' name. So can you pray in one minute again? Open my eyes. Remember we keep praying this prayer. It's not a ritual. Open my eyes. I am in your presence. I have come to Mount Zion. Let my eyes be open. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So three important priorities. Now please look up. God gave us 24 hours. The unit of destiny is time time is the unit of destiny that means that your entire lifespan is measured as a function of time every day that passes chronos we call it the passage of time it counts to your overall destiny and it matters that we are equipped with the knowledge 
that helps us to live lives that are effective and relevant. I had the privilege to be profoundly mentored by Dr. Miles Munro. And so it gave me a very, very intelligent perspective about life, about purpose, about vision, and I'm ever grateful for it. Hallelujah. Now, not everything in your life produces the same effect as far as your destiny is concerned. Please listen. God gave us 24 hours and is full of several activities that can move us towards destiny. But not all of them move us at the same level and not all of them carry the same gravity. Are we together now? It is very important. I think one of the, the wrong perceptions that our generation has is that we allocate equal time an equal priority and equal interest to everything and anything your time for play is equal to your time of prayer your time of gisting is equal to your time of personal development there must be a system of prioritizing your life please listen very carefully and so I want to show you the three in my opinion and supported by scripture the three most important things in a man's life. These three areas I want to show you tonight are worth dying for. Not everything is worth dying for. Hallelujah. There are people who have died for nothing. There are people who have died the deaths of fools. It is important to know what is worth committing your energy, your time, and your money. Listen. At the end of your life, there are only few things that will make your life count. Believe me when I tell you this. In the maze of several activities clamoring for your attention, you know, the average young man is, is like a magnet attracting different things that need your attention in life. And I have found out in my little experience and by the privilege of wisdom and mentorship and the word that in the end of your life, there are not more than four, five things that are worth living for. So in, in our busyness, our attempt to make money, marry, have children, serve God, grow ministries, expand, all of these things are important. But a time must come in your life where you have to just shut the door and say, what is really important? Because many of us, as I'll be showing you, if you don't know what is important, you will major on the minors and you will minor on the majors. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Right, so very quickly, the first and most important priority in any man's life regardless of call regardless of assignment regardless of whatever it is your experience is the first real priority worth dying for worth living for is your relationship with God please write it down your relationship with God is not the first most important thing it is the highest Your relationship with God. What is the purpose of God in your life? Please look up. You will be surprised how many believers cannot answer this question. What is the purpose of God in a man's life? Many will tell you to make us rich. Many will tell you to make us succeed. You're not wrong, but you're not entirely right. What exactly is the purpose of God? Why should Bill Gates need God? Why should the leader of a terrorist group need God? Why should a first class student need God? Why should a dying man need God? Why is it that when you stand uh, at the bed of someone about to die, you will not tell him, remember your real estate, have you written your will? You just say, please, have you made your ways right with God? And if he gives his life to Christ, you can stand there and smile while he transits your relationship with God what is the purpose of God in your life I want to tell you because many believers do not know the purpose and the relevance of God we only know some of the things that he can do but why do I need God 
And if we do not clear up this understanding, it will affect us in the future. Because Africa, look up please, Africa as a continent, because we are saddled with our pressure of poverty and the need for relevance and several things, it necessitates our, our religious affiliations. So you find out that when people go out of this region and life is comfortable, they have um, policies that support their well-being, usually they will not need God again. So what is the purpose of God in my life? Is it to make me a man of God? Is it to make me get a job? See, purpose is what gives value to everything in life. No matter what you have and no matter what you do, if it is not supported by purpose, purpose answers the question, why? Why God? Is God blessing someone already? I want to give you three reasons why you need God in your life. Remember, we're examining the most important things, the priorities, in a man's life number one God is important in your life because it is your relationship with God through Jesus Christ that secures your eternal destiny God is relevant in a man's life because without a relationship with God there is no guarantee for your eternal destiny John chapter 3 from verse 15 you read to 17 John chapter 3 it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life then 16 says for God not for angel Michael not for angel Gabriel not for the third living creature for God himself so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. Why do I need God in my life? Because the only security to my eternal destiny is my relationship with God. Please listen to me. There is no educational qualification that crosses the boundary of the earth realm. There is no savvy, business savvy, that sustains the ability to cross the earth realm. It is important for us to understand that our relationship with God is not just a tool for success alone. Primarily, the Bible says if our hope is only in this world, we are of all men most miserable. Listen to me. No matter what you lose in life, if your relationship with God is still intact, you are still a winner. Hear what I'm saying? And no matter what you gain in life, if you lose God in the process, you really lost. The Bible gives us the parable of the rich man, are we Bible students, and Lazarus. That man had a lot of money. That man had so many things. And then he died. Lazarus died, sin too. They now get to a realm where money does not count. They now get to a realm where education does not count. They now get to a realm where political affiliation is not an advantage. And the Lazarus is sitting at Abraham's bosom. And the man is at the other side. And he's standing, wondering, and crying for a drop of water. That means the purpose was not really to quench the kind of test you think. Are we, are we together now? Please listen to me. Let me tell you this. Your relationship with God is not loyalty to your parents' religion. Your relationship with God is not an affiliation that um, was brought about by your sympathy to Christianity. That you compared many religions and you felt like an award. This is the best. So I go for it. The proposition that we give people sometimes as ministers as to why they should come to God may be very sincere but it is dangerous if the only reason why I introduce you to God is because of tea and bread then you are in trouble the relevance of God spans this realm it is very important 
This is God for you. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness and find precious joys in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after listen for you've shown me heavens my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life if our hope is only in this life whether you like what I'm saying or not a day will come when your wisdom will be tested it will not be tested by an exam it will be tested by a transition the wise ones are the ones who will still stand whether or not they are in this realm. Listen, this is the reason why we continue to introduce people to Jesus. It's not that we are guilty of, of not being evangelists. No. Your relationship with God. So the first purpose of God in your life is the security of your eternal destiny. Number two, the second reason or the second purpose of God in your life, I hope you understand how I'm, I'm arranging it, is your exploits in life. It is true that you can succeed in life without God, but I guarantee you there will be a vacuum in your success that will make it clear that it's not God that brought you there. I've had the privilege, and I will tell you this, I've had the privilege to be connected to a lot of blessed and influential people. I have seen power, I have seen dimensions of wealth and relevance in the lives of people, but I'm surprised at the vacuum that refuses to be filled by these things. Education, money, prestige, and all of these things. When God lifts you, he lifts you in such a way that his space remains intact. Are we together now? Your exploits in life. Daniel 11.32 The Bible says the B part, but the people that do know their God, it says they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Shall do exploits. Your excelling in life depends on your relationship with God. Second Samuel 22 and verse 30. Second Samuel 22 and verse 30. Second Samuel. He says, for by thee I have run to a troop. He says, by my God I have leaped over a wall. Impossible feats based on your connection with God. It is true that our connection with God transcends the relevance that this time brings, but it also makes sense in this life. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That one with God is truly a majority. When God holds your hands, like the worship team will always sing, everything is possible it is true 
when God decides to hold a man's hand he will walk wonders through your life that will dumbfound principalities and powers your life becomes an epistle of wonder after wonder why do we need connection with God because our exploits in this life depends on it the wisdom that comes from God the creativity that comes from God the anointing that comes from God I met a family that cried to me and said apostle our lives are in complete shambles we've heard what God is doing through you please can you pray for us and I looked at them with joy in my heart because I knew their lives will change yes there is what God can give you that will help you to change men, change cities, change territories. Connection with God is an advantage. And when I talk about God, I talk about the God of the Bible because God means many things to many people. So that there's no confusion, we're talking about the God, the creator of the ends of the earth. When you hold my When you hold my hands, impossible becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold job situation intimidate you don't let the pride of men intimidate you just make sure that at all times your hands are on his hands he says I have engraved you in the palm of my hands and step by step you will watch God lift you level by level listen my life is a testimony of what happens when God holds a man's hand when you hold God's hand is a good thing but when he holds your hand when you hold my hand everything becomes possible when you The Bible says, and the hand of God was upon, it came upon Elijah. When you do normal and natural things, it's not worthy of commendation. Because that's what men do. But when your life produces a result that only God can produce, it is proof that you are assisted by a divine hand. You need to strengthen your connection with God. of God in your life as far as earth is concerned as far as earth is concerned the third point I give you is that only God can give you true peace and fulfillment please write it down the third reason why you need God in your life is that only your connection with God guarantees peace and fulfillment everybody please say peace and fulfillment most people please look up you see respectfully speaking most of us here are, there are very few people here who are already established from all of the indications of establishment and so most of us are on a journey or beginning the journey to establishment and so on and so forth so you may not value things like peace and fulfillment because you are still trying to make ends meet there is a level when you get to you will find out 
that nothing in life sustains the ability to give you peace the highest index for measuring wealth is peace write it now in advance and thank me decades to come the highest index for measuring wealth for measuring um, relevance is peace the highest measure of wealth and freedom that's what I wrote here the highest measure of wealth and freedom is peace three scriptures quickly Romans chapter 5 verse 1 chapter 5 therefore being justified by faith koinonia read on with me we have peace with God hold on don't rush peace with God is different from the peace of God peace with God means I have made my way right with God peace with God it's not the same as the peace of God that you have made peace with God that means when I look at God I stand with joy knowing that there is no barrier that interrupts fellowship peace with God peace with God it says we are justified by faith and now we have peace with God most people do not have peace with God we may have money we may have titles and these things are not wrong we may have all of the things that people chase after but when you lack peace with God there is a serious problem because at the end of your life what will give you fulfillment is knowing that my ways are right with God look how the generals that transited in recent times transited Reinhard Bonke knowing that his time was almost there it was with joy and gladness he came to Nigeria preached his, he knew it was his last message he said it he had raised Daniel Kolenda. He had put everything in place. And he said, Earth, I see you when we join the cloud of witnesses to come and pick the rest. He waved Earth by. Peace with God. These men knew where they were going. They were not hoping. No. Billy Graham, one of the few people who finished his assignment and remained and were just watching Earth. You will know a man has finished his assignment. Set up the Billy Graham Institute and when it was time with honor and with joy he waved his hand same thing T.L. Osborne there are people who wake up and say where am I they say you are not on earth again no. it's over it's over what happened the last thing I know is that I left one city I was hurrying up to go <laughs> it's over period where is my PA it doesn't exist here where is my certificate? It doesn't exist here. Peace with God. John 14, 27. It's a good Valentine message, isn't it? John 14, 27. <laughs> read on with me, Koinonia. Ready? One, two, read. Peace, I live with you. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus is speaking here. Peace, I live with you. Among the many things, he, listen, there are two things the Bible tells us we should expect. One, peace. Two, the Holy Ghost. Peace, I live with you. You need it so much. Forget joy, it will come. But peace, I live with you. My peace, I give unto you. Not as the world gives. It says, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid that means these two things will remain in your destiny until the peace of God comes to drive them out trouble fear will remain in your heart until the peace of God comes to build a garrison the peace of God shalom nothing missing nothing broken a state of restfulness look at me the peace of God is not based on results. The peace of God is a supernatural impartation of that dimension. You can be in the midst of fire 
yet you are like the still waters if you are waiting for everything to be in place for you to have peace that's how the world gives but there is the peace of God that in spite of every storm in your life and your family, it is true that you've not paid your rent. It is true that things are, you know, haywire, your academics, your life is true. You've not had a child yet and people see you and you are completely restful. Because there are few things that are worth dying for. There's a peace that I have in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and these peaks in my heart only comes alive every time I hear your voice comes it comes alive There are some of you who are doctors here look at me young people now are depressed over nothing is because they have not had this message you see people wrinkled you guess and say you are 40 say no i just clocked 28 what has added your age like that the trouble that continues to disturb people i need to make it I, i'm not teaching you to be irresponsible but hear me you will die for nothing and the world will bury you and keep moving. You need to learn to come to a point where you say, Hey, shut the door at every trouble and everything. And find rest. He leads me beside the steel. Life has a noisy way of depressing you. Left, right, till now you've not gotten a job. Till now you've not married. The child has not come. This has not happened. Today, Valentine, nobody called you again. You see, all those kinds of... Listen, listen to me. When those things happen, it's amazing. Your BP begins to rise. You know why? You are thinking nonsense. That is not the mind of Christ. And yet you can be completely at peace. Where will my school fees come from? Where will my rent come from? Listen, worry does not solve today's problems. Worry kills today's peace. It kills today's opportunities. It destroys tomorrow's door. So that you cannot even make progress in your life. Jesus took a whole chapter to talk about worry. Listen, this is a very powerful message. Learn peace now. Don't wait till they pay you salary. If your peace depends on your external environment, Satan has mastered you. It means you are about to die fast. Only comes alive every time I hear your voice. Not every time I receive an alert. Not every time I receive an award. Not every time I feel I am making progress. The voice of God is my peace. Ah. A state of restfulness. Not irresponsibility. Restfulness. Lord, you are in control. Why will you be awake and I'll be awake too? One of us should sleep. You have chosen that you do not sleep nor slumber. So let me find sleep. Many people don't sleep because of all kinds of depression. What is happening to my father? What is happening to my mother? And Satan just adjusts. Hey, do you know they just said that um, the land that your house was built upon, there's supposed to be a road there. And they're going, ha, ah, what will I do? And you see people, Say, my soul, find rest. One more time, prophesy. Say, my soul, find rest. Find rest. This is how champions live. They are, they are shockingly peaceful. Because many times, when there is noise in your life, the voice of God is not there. There can be an earthquake and he's not in it. There can be all kinds of winds and when all that nonsense is gone then here he comes the still small voice are we together do you know that every time we are troubled we should change the power of god from coming to our lives it is only when you are at rest 
even doctors will tell you when they want to carry out surgical operations on patients and they find out that their BP is vacillating, they will have to say, look, find a way of stabilizing these people emotionally. Is that true? They gather their family members to crack jokes. They find something that makes them happy. It's been proven that when family members are gathered around sick patients or things they like, it can aid their recovery. I was watching, I think it was the day before yesterday or so, on the news when they were showing people in China dancing to ease the whole the coronavirus. And people were just dancing. And it's, if it makes them happy, why not? Listen, beware of prolonged depression, gloominess, when, when the peace of God does not find expression in your life death is being ministered to you you are dying already it's not when you are sick and cannot move are we blessed peace second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 now the lord of peace himself give you peace how long by all means you know what by all means means whatever it, it will take God to shake to ensure that you remain out. the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the Lord be with you all the Lord will give you peace by all means that is it is based on his desire to give you peace that he prospers you if he notices that the, the peace is being interrupted because of poverty, he will switch and attack poverty and take it personal. Not because he's really interested in money. The goal is that you find peace. Please understand this. When God lifts you, when God blesses you, when God wipes your tears, this is what he wants to give you. And he said, by all means. This is why he keeps pumping mysteries upon mysteries. He's giving you all the keys. It is his by all means agenda to make sure that whatever it will take, you do not remain small. The Lord of peace himself will give you peace always by all means. Are we blessed? So your relationship with God, this is the first most important priority in your life. Please look up. Believers, hear me. It matters that you make up your mind now that nothing will ever make me leave God in this life. You would think what I'm saying is very simple and very easy. No. Make up your mind. What shall separate us, the Bible says, from the love of God? Then it begins to list many things. For many people, they've not even seen one tenth of those things. And yet they're they are here because of God. I will wave you and will reconsider it when you, are in, when you are serious with me. People have left God because of marriage. People have left God because of money. People have left God because of education. People have left God because of all of those things. That you get to a point where you say, Lord, the issue of leaving you is like an initiation. I'm there and there for good. Make up your mind that I'm stuck with you and I'm stuck with you genuinely. I'm not using you. I am here to stay and I'm here to stay eternally. Now listen, your relationship with God is worth fighting for. Your relationship with God is worth dying for. Your relationship with God is the highest the noblest pursuit on earth fail in every other area of your life and ensure that you are rich towards God you still want did you hear what I said yes sir there were two men hanging on the tree they were thieves and one of them was arguing and talking a lot of nonsense towards Jesus and the other one you know began to call on his mercy and he said this day you will be with me in paradise straight up because he made a decision to be connected to God many people would rather be connected to politicians than God rather be connected to this now men are important but God first in the beginning God. 
it must remain so in the beginning not later in the equation god mm -mm. in the beginning god god is not an option when all else fail you say god talk since there's nowhere to go let me just no, 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 no. in the beginning and from the beginning let it be god from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you jesus oh jesus i just wanted to sing that point from beginning to the end alpha omega god forever i'm with you for the long run i'm not with you for 10 years i'm not have you seen people that you meet and you say ah, i used to know you and they'll tell you well those days fcs or su or something say now nah, the reality of life has made us to go where did you go to jesus looked at the disciples and said will you also go he said to whom shall we go no matter what happens in your life please always make sure that you are on god's side guarantee that you are safe are we blessed the first priority in a man's life is your relationship with god number two the second most important priority in your life worth dying for worth living for what sacrificing for is your family family is a very important thing in the sight of god family is a very important thing in society hallelujah family life is very important the most important unit of society is family society is full of all kinds of institutions religious institutions judicial institutions commerce centers for commerce but the most important unit and institution in any society is family someone say family what is the purpose of family why is family important i will give you two reasons number one your family in most cases will be your greatest support and motivation system put it this way your greatest support and motivation will almost always come from family family will generally provide you the greatest support system and the greatest motivation why is family important because your family both nuclear and then extended your family will usually not in all cases but in most cases will be the last place that you can fall back on when all fails no matter what you become or don't become you are almost sure that no matter what it is family will be your greatest support and will be your greatest motivation listen from scripture there is no guarantee that you have indefinite support and motivation anywhere the strongest support system and the strongest motivation system in your life will almost always there are very few exceptions but almost always be family it was because of family relationship that joseph looked at his brothers and did not lock them up and looked at them and said you guys what you did 12 years but we are family sit down and eat family is very very important job when job lost almost everything in his life the last person who was standing with him was not his brother was not elihu was not the other two gentlemen the bible says in job 42 verse 10 that when job prayed for his friends so he had friends that were alive where were they he had friends that were alive but they were not there but his wife stood even though she was talking a lot of nonsense at least she stood the person that insults you and stands <laughs> it's like flogging a child and say i will kill you and you are still shifting him from the junction 
Are we together? Family is very important. Look at me. If you do not understand the power of family, then you will be building catastrophe in your destiny. There is no guarantee that your church, koinonia, job, business, anything will indefinitely guarantee you. When everybody, listen to me, said crucify Jesus, when everything happened, at least when he resurrected, angels came. The Holy Ghost came on the third day to bring him back to life. And where did he go back to? Talk to me. He went and a throne was prepared at the right hand of the Father. And he sat down. Listen, please hear me. Your family is very important. First, your physical family and then your spiritual family. Your spiritual family is also family. They are the only ones who have the ability to take your nonsense and still love you. The whole world does not think you are that much of a big deal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now? Family is very important. Family is very powerful. Your greatest support, your greatest motivation will come from family. Now, this is true. Listen, look up, please. And if you understand this, then all of the other things like marriage, relationship, destiny connections now become something you pay attention to. Why? Because you now know that your greatest support is family. You can lose a job, but you, your family remains your family. Even when they say they disown you, it's just a psychological statement. Are we together? family is important and that means that for you to excel in family life it requires serious preparation whether it is relationship whether it is marriage anything that has to do with family life my brothers and my sisters listen to me very carefully family life is a serious issue that requires very serious preparation the Bible says there is no man intending to build a house he says who will not sit down and count the cost write this down the most important key to sustainable relationships and marriage is knowledge the most important key there are many other keys but the most important key To sustainable relationships and marriage is knowledge please say knowledge the most important key to relationships and marriage and family especially within the context of marriage is not love no love is important but more than love knowledge broadly speaking wisdom knowledge and understanding proverbs 24 please give it to us from verse 3 and 4 you will need wisdom you will need knowledge you will need understanding through wisdom proverbs 24 and verse 3 says a house is built it says by understanding it is established verse 4 and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with precious and pleasant riches everybody say I need knowledge I am convinced look at me please I am convinced that one of the reasons why family life in many many circles around the world continues to um, nose dive is because we do not pay attention to the knowledge dimension we only pay attention to the emotional side of marriage now watch this do you know the reason why 
although there are accidents they are minimized relative to the number of cars because they don't allow you to drive until you go to a driving school is that correct you go to a driving school you learn how to drive you are certified by a driving school it would take a while they would test you when you go to make your driver's license are we together they check you they profile you they make sure that you are doing well ideally speaking now and then eventually they give you the access to drive but anybody can just pick a lady from anywhere and just go anywhere if a church rejects you you go to a garden if a garden rejects you you stay at home and quietly you are married and because of that there is a lot of clash of opinions and ideas this is very important is bishop Oedipo who will say there is no new generation truth truth is truth believe me if all you take to the table of marriage and relationship is love you will be disappointed everything you hate now you once loved knowledge knowledge marriage in today's world and relationships require more than love there are many things that need to be put in place you need to have understanding of who a man is who a woman is conflict management systems leadership parenting finances these are real issues it doesn't mean you must know everything but there is a level of sufficient preparation listen no level of preparation and investment in marriage becomes a waste remember that marriage is for a lifetime marriage is not for two years 10 years 15 years marriage is not for when children come so no matter what kind of preparation it is very important is God blessing us family is very important when you lose family you have lost a major thing you will not die but you will be greatly affected you can lose a job and get another one you can lose money and have it again you can lose your reputation and build it back but when you lose family you lose a lot are we together we must trust God to build families that last and the key to building families is not the emotional activities of love 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 here and there it's more than that it takes knowledge wisdom understanding because the challenges that come in family are real issues that are solved only through knowledge they are not emotional problems alone and they require knowledge if you are together with me say amen hallelujah for instance the bible gives us you know in all fairness let, let me let me let me give you a confession I, I i i contemplated a lot whether i would talk about family you know and marriage and relationships and all of that um i thought about it but um I knew that I owe I owe you teaching you the truth of God's word number one and then number two it's an uncomfortable truth but let me tell you this the variables in marriage are too many to learn about marriage through opinions the variables every married man who agree that every home is unique and there is no general template based on personal experience and so we must be able to minimize experiences and focus on the Word of God are we together now yes and let me tell you this and I want to submit to you truly it is not always true that experience teaches about marriage it is not always true experience is an added advantage the major mentors in the issue of marriage in the Bible were not married themselves God Jesus Paul 
and yet they were the authorities that taught about marriage this is a thing of the spirit are we together I've always said a man can dwell with his wife for 30 years hurting and destroying this dear woman's life but just because she vowed that she would not divorce after 30 years they can use the template of their experience to teach that this is how to remain in marriage is wrong because the woman may have been quietly enduring pain for 30 years the word of God is living and abiding forever you will never go wrong with this book believe me when I tell you this you will never go wrong with this book are we together it's very important because I'm saying this because there are many young people unmarried who think that there's nothing to learn let me just marry and then I will start learning pragmatically no no the preparation for marriage is before there are foundational truths you should know before you will continue learning even when you are married are we together but there are truths that are foundational on bending and it's important for you to know can I just touch on two or three information number one we are discussing family look up please there is nowhere in the Bible where God tells a woman to love a man read your Bible God does not instruct women to love men women wives to respect their husbands because psychologically speaking love does not mean anything to a man but when you honor and respect that man that is his idea of love are we together now all men without reservation please listen to me no matter how emotionally appealing a woman is towards a man if genuine respect and honor is not there there is a violation of a foundational ordinance it's a matter of time there will be a repercussion the bible jesus himself spoke a bit about marriage and then in ephesians chapter 5 when you read the bible says wives submit wives respect respect now let me tell you this please look up it is true that honor should be for all men but there's all kinds of nonsense flowing around society that the concept of equality is being one with Christ but organically speaking listen ladies please hear me organically speaking the head of every woman is her husband he is not the head only when he brings food. He is the head as this. God knows what he built. And when he gives you a pattern, maintain it. Are we, are we together now? The Bible clearly tells us, Wives, your interpretation of love to a husband is submission and respect. That means... I hope you know the Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing. It didn't say he that finds a woman and makes her a wife. That means she must be a wife to be found. A wife does not happen when you are married. A wife is a mental position. Are we together now? It's, it, this is a very powerful revelation. The Bible, your Bible, look up please ladies. It means that every woman who wants to be successful in her home and every woman who wants to be successful even in a relationship must before a man comes to your life, the assignment you should be involved with is learning submission and learning respect. Because this is your, this is the mandate upon you to your husband. 
as Paul began to teach the church, it will be difficult, brothers and sisters, for a woman who truly understands respect and honor and submission to have a bad marriage. It will be difficult. There is something respect does to men. It makes them vulnerable. When a woman respects a man truly, when a woman submits to a man truly and unashamedly, she makes him owe her. He will owe her honor. He will owe her care. But ladies are gradually losing it because the context of modern day society tells you, look, you know, the whole, uh, you stand up for your right and so on and so forth. And we're corrupting God's pattern. It's a matter of time. There will be destruction. Hallelujah. Ask anybody who is from 50, 60, 70 years old and above in marriage, they will, because they've gone long enough to tell you, they will tell you sincerely that the strength of a woman is in her submission. Look up. The Bible, two books in the Bible are named after women. Ruth and Esther. Isn't it amazing that the book of Esther is not called Ahasuerus? And the book of Ruth is not called Boaz. And the books parallel themselves because the books have to do with number one, weak women. Ruth and Hadassah. Number two, the Bible, that book has to do with great successful and, and established men. Ahasuerus and Boaz. And in both books, the strength of the women was their weakness. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It was the dexterity of Esther's submission, her wisdom that made her to conquer her man, granted access for the promotion of Mordecai. Are we together now? And eventually stop what would have been the destruction of the Jews. There was no sword that Esther held, yet she killed everything. Weakness is greater than strength. Weakness is a weapon. It can do many great things. Ladies, let me tell you this. Make up your mind that you are going to preserve your family by sustaining the unashamedness to sincerely submit to your husband and to respect him. You know what respect means? To respect means to hold in high esteem. To respect means to praise. Are we together now? There is no man who will indefinitely continue to love a woman and a wife. I wrote something here. You may want to write it down. While I was preparing, the Holy Spirit just fired this to my spirit and I said, wow, this is instructive. Ready? Love in marriage is unconditional. But stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. Love in marriage is unconditional. But stability and fulfillment is highly conditional the narrative that love a man continues to love a woman and live with her indefinitely regardless of what she becomes regardless of what it it looks like is true but there is an aspect of it that is a lie because coexistence is based on the principle of compatibility and understanding please you, you have to get this you can love someone but not want to live with the person again. Are we together now? Yes. Ladies, your biggest advantage in family life is not competing with your husband. Your biggest advantage in family life is not your becoming a CEO or you're becoming a great woman your biggest advantage is mastering submission i read an article one time that was sent a woman who was married for 80 years maybe some of you have seen the article married for 80 years she lived i think up to 104 years or so and died and she wrote an advice for the ladies of this generation even me when i read what she said i said ah this thing requires the holy ghost the woman wrote what 90% of you here will tear it. And yet she said that was the secret to her home of 80 years. When you want to last, 
prepare to last very long not long very long you cannot survive 80 years in marriage by mistake are you getting what i'm saying now and the woman said according to the article that she literally was the one running the home there is something i can tell you about men i've been one all my life i will tell you this men honor those above them they lift up those below them they fight those who claim equality with them what men do not want is the competition of equality when you are higher than men they will gladly respect you when you are lower than them they will gladly lift you but when you claim equality subconsciously you bring yourself to a position where you will attract a lot of pain so you must obtain grace in the name of jesus we want to build homes and family lives that last and the secret is not in the vastness of information there are a few essentials that are foundational submission now we come from different backgrounds i'm coming to the men but ladies listen to me we come from different backgrounds that interpret weakness interpret submission as weakness the average lady who is submissive today is interpreted as being desperate and interpret they interpret as being desperate you are not showing like you are the very thing that is the honor of a woman is now being perceived as weakness Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And for the men, this one thing I know from scripture and from the experience of people with proven family track records that the real needs of a woman is security and emotional fulfillment. It is true. Love in one word for a woman is security. security and emotional fulfillment security so every man who intends to build a home must sustain the unashamedness to communicate security and to communicate the requisite level of emotional fulfillment that will give the woman psychological strength it will not just happen the first two three four five years of marriage it is a principle that will last. I look at my mom today, even in her old age, and I still see and discern that craving of security and emotional fulfillment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is dangerous when men get married to women and ill treat them like pieces of rags simply because they are now married She's giving you two, three children, and then it ends. It's the reason why people must ask the Holy Ghost to help them. Because you see, nobody has the power to stay with one person forever. You change clothes. You change hair. You change cars. You change jobs. You change everything. But now, you are mandated to stay with one person for the rest of your life. It's not natural. So there will have to be a grace that continues to keep that person fresh before you. Regardless of the reality of advancement in age and life and time and so on and so forth. Are we together now? Yes. I've always given this example. When you see a man of, say, 60 years or 70 years on a wheelchair, shaking because he's sick and the wife is standing by him and saying my husband at that point is no longer emotions there has to be a grace from god that makes that woman to still love because nobody that scenario by default is not pleasant women need security they need emotional fulfillment that means what men should do is not just to look for wives. They should understand that if I commit myself to marriage, 
I'm committing myself to providing security, providing emotional fulfillment. It is true that when men provide security and emotional fulfillment, they provide for the women the fuel that drives them to be supportive, that drives them to give their best and their all towards the central purpose of that home. Gentlemen, listen to me. We must make up our minds that in the name of Jesus, all of the responsibility that we need to submit ourselves to, that make for providing security and providing the requisite level of emotional fulfillment that you will labor under God to make that happen. This is where things like irresponsibility and the rest becomes bad. Are we together now? Yes. The motive that drives many people from marriage is very disturbing because marriage is a lifetime thing. And anything that is not lasting will become a disadvantage eventually. I hope you are getting blessed with what I'm sharing. This is a very powerful Valentine message. So that as you are preparing, you don't just look and say, Ah, I'm not young again. No. My department who is there? Or my this or who is there? Who can I check? And I'm ready for marriage. Just because the church approves your wedding date doesn't mean you are ready for marriage. These are the things that must be in place. With all humility, you can know I'm ready for marriage. I'm ready for marriage because I'm ready to commit to providing security and providing the emotional fulfillment. I'm ready for marriage because I am ready to honor my husband sincerely. I am ready to respect. I am ready to honor him truly. Now, let me say this. The real way to be a blessing is to work on yourself. The real way to be a blessing is not expecting what will make you a blessing. It's working on yourself. I think that most times we have it the other way around. Most ladies believe that when you get that exceptional man, when you get that wonderful man, then you will be happy. Most men believe that when you get that exceptional lady, then you will be happy. Let me tell you this. It is true that the value that is built from within you becomes your advantage. I told you that love in marriage is unconditional, but stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. It will be impossible, look up please, it will be impossible for a couple that eventually are not active contributors of value to themselves to indefinitely continue to remain in joy and be happy to see themselves every day. It's not true. They will make up their mind that under every condition this marriage will stand. But as far as joy and fulfillment is concerned, it does not just work by default. Listen, please look up. No woman should love her husband just because he brings bread to the table. Just because he's visionary. Just because he's making progress. However, when that man becomes visionary, when that man becomes responsible, it's easy for her knees to touch the ground because there is a basis. Are we together now? There is a support system that encourages her honor. You cannot compare two women. On one side, you have this man who is not responsible. He's, he doesn't care whether the rent is paid. He doesn't care whether the children are fed. All he knows is that whatever will be, will be. And then a man who is meticulously responsible. The approach of their wives to them will not be the same. The woman will say, I will love my husband forever. But you cannot say they are fulfilled at the same level. Are we together? Fulfillment and stability is based on mutual contribution of value. Please write it down. This is very powerful. That mindset of unconditional love just for nothing is going to cost many people a lot because there are many ladies who are not doing anything about their lives. They are not growing. They are not building themselves. They are not building their minds. All they are doing is praying and expecting a visionary born again 
establishment to come same thing happening for the men they are not building themselves they are not building capacity all they are doing is praying for that wonderful lady to come it does not work that way what i'm saying is true you may love me as a person but you will get fulfilled around me only based on the awareness of the value that I continue to provide for you. Is that true? Yes, sir. When it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. It, I know you are my son, but I need value to come from you to gladden my heart so that something can leave me to you. Are we together? Now look up, please. As the bride of Christ, we are all his bride. He will never deny you. But in terms of usability, we are not the same. Are we together now? Do you agree with that? That God can almost seem to abandon one person and come and stand and invest his attention on another. Why? Because of your committal to advancing his purposes. The sacrifices you have made to build yourself spiritually. That every time you show up in a place, you allow so much of God to find expression. And God has noted you for being so useful for the kingdom. And so he will guard you. He will protect you. This is how it is. No man will indefinitely be proud of his wife forever for nothing. No woman will indefinitely be proud of her husband for nothing. These are hard truths that many will not tell you. But listen, your love will remain regardless of what happens. But your fulfillment and the stability of your home will be predicated upon the mutual awareness of the value that you provide. This is true. All staff are staff in a company. But there is promotion even within that company and for every promotion there are many benefits that come with it someone can start from level one and in 10 15 years be at the same level this happens psychologically a man can promote his wife in his mind psychologically she's still his wife he still loves her but the depth of honor and committal continues to change every time she's an unfolding of wonder she continues to be an epitome of value and one day the man will stand and say lord thank you for giving me such a woman that's how you know you are valuable so away with that idea that my husband will marry me and no matter what happens the bible says he should love me you are right but you will still feel the heat of being valueless same thing happens to the man you cannot say well i've married and i've married i've paid a dowry and that's all you will be surprised at how draggy and grudgy and sad your marriage will be there will still be love but there will not be fulfillment fulfillment in marriage is highly conditional i love all the workers in this ministry you are precious people and you know that I love you with all my heart. But in all fairness, the level and the extent of contribution at an individual level is not the same. Are we together now? That means that the trust level the, and, and many other factors will not be the same. God loves everybody the same, but he does not trust everybody the same. Value is first virtue and then skill listen every time we talk of value don't just think skill ladies don't just think of the ability to cook food alone and the ability to do all. no 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 your skill comes later the real value of a person is your virtue what is your virtue your closeness to the character of christ we must continue to fight and contend for growth non-stop every day i want to become a better version of me listen a lady here must challenge herself married or not you must tell yourself i will be so exceptional and so virtuous that my husband will look at me and say thank god for this gift of god given to me same thing with the men that your wife will look at you tomorrow and say thank god for giving me this gift virtue no matter how gifted you are 
if you do not have virtue and character you will not go far are you hearing what i'm saying now this is very important virtue is a measure of your closeness to christ i always give this analogy that if virtue and skill run a sprint skill will win but if virtue and skill run a marathon virtue will win a day will come when your skill will fail you but it is your virtue that will keep you you will get to places in your life where everybody you meet is equally skillful your edge will be your virtue you will get to a point where everybody is brilliant every man of god is anointed every woman of god is skilled your real virtue see i have seen the power of virtue the lifting power of virtue there are businessmen today who have won contracts worth hundreds of millions of naira and dollar not necessarily because of their skill but something about the the life of their wife their children or their husband you make that company say no you are the kind of people we want to work with you are cautious you are very respectful ladies go back and pray my dear brothers go back and pray thank god for skill but keep skill and cry and say lord make me exceptional being exceptional is like a magnet it's true there are many skillful people that are not virtuous you get to a point where in your managerial rise company wise in terms of your career you will get to a point where it's not just by your skill and technical and intellectual qualification that you rise again you get to a point where your edge and your advantage becomes the love the manner there are people today you know i met a man great man wealthy man and i saw a wonderful person that was a chef to him and, and i asked and i you know i asked that question i said um how did you get this person and he looked at me and laughed and said this is one of the nicest elderly woman this is one of the nicest women in the world and it's true when the woman came in within minutes I had fallen in love with this wonderful woman elderly woman and her the the level of of character and manner and cautiousness in speaking the body language of respect and honor is is almost flattering I said my god where did this woman learn this that is virtue there are women visitors come to your house and they vow never to come again why not because you don't have skill but you lack character there are men people do business once with you and vow that they will never because you are you are there is no temperance there is no patience there is no joy there is no self-control all of these virtues they are powerful the world is looking for the fruit of the spirit in men even when they know they don't have it is god blessing us tonight yes sir make sure that you make up your mind that i will be virtuous i will be virtuous virtue is not for women so men when we are talking of virtue don't think and say i hope this lady is hearing no be exceptional look at me conquer the limitation of tribe conquer the limitation of your territory ladies make up your mind and vow before god that i will be an exceptional woman that because of me people will love and honor my husband husbands make up your mind that i will be a man of solid character that because of me they will love. do you know lack of character is what is programming disaster for many children many of us today our parents were exceptionally skillful but they were not virtuous and there are doors that would have cheaply opened today that are closed when you are thinking family life don't think yourself think about your children think about their 10 years think about their 20 years I do not want a situation where my children will not have an opportunity to enjoy a great life because of me and people will say oh you are apostles child no whether spiritually or physically is the reason why we continue to strive by God's grace to create that ladder so that anybody who follows through that ladder already has a road created 
praise the Lord. It is my commitment in ministry, biologically, and so on and so forth. That anyone who is connected to this vision and this grace, that by God's grace, through our sacrifice, that you will be able to climb on it, that every time you, you are purported to be connected to this grace, it will open doors for you. This is the prayer. This is the desire. But it will not happen by default. And it's not always the issue of anointing. Virtue. Can you lay hands on your head in one minute and say, Lord, change what needs to change in my life. Please pray. Change what needs to change in my life. I'm not ashamed, oh God, before you. Pray. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Please make sure you are praying. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you. To me what you are pray lord make me exceptional if you are a dear lady pray lord i'm tired of just having skills certificate should not be the only thing i'm bringing to my home grant me the grace to be exceptional that my life will not close the door for my husband that my life will not close the door for my wife i obtain grace of god from heaven to be exceptional regardless my background grant me grace someone is praying grant me grace i cry to you O god of heaven grant me grace supernatural grace by the spirit Listen, please sit down. Look at me. You must train yourself. Virtue. Make up your mind. When you dress, dress well. When you speak, speak well. Don't see people and look and say, ah, how far? And you are bending somebody. You are not virtuous. You may be human, but you are not virtuous. How many leaders do you want God to bring in your life? With this kind of attitude and you get what i'm saying now don't get up in the morning and pass people anyhow good morning ah, how are we fine god bless you how is today don't see people and pass and say please you greeted me whether i answer no there is no such thing as i am like that men can change are we together there is no such thing as I'm angry. We are in our family, we are like that. Hey, once I am angry, even my parents give me chance. It's bad. Change it. That's what the house of God is a place of transformation. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Listen, I continue to pray and ask the Lord to reveal to me the aspects of my life. I'm not ashamed of transition. I'm not ashamed of transformation. That what I am not today, I can be tomorrow. Lord, show me. Thank God for the ones I have, but which ones do I not have? Some of you, you need to work on respect. Some of you, you need to work on honor. You don't have honor for people at all. Some of us, you need to work on your mouth. Your mouth is poisonous. It's like a sword. You can tear down people. It's something to work on. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Some of you need to work on the fortitude for jealousy. Little things. The moment you see a celebration somewhere and it's not you, the senior brother of the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Some of you, you give up very easily. Listen, if you don't love yourself, it's wickedness to want another person to love you. Why should someone love what you hate? Are we together now? Learn to draw your confidence from within. First, who you are in Christ. 
and then second on the strength of the dexterity of your virtue listen you can stamp your feet with all humility as a man and as a woman and say by the grace of god the god of heaven i know we are growing but i can stand to say i'm virtuous it's not pride i told myself and many of you who follow my teachings you've heard me say it my life's goal aside from being a man of god sincerely speaking my life's goal as a person is that god will grant me the grace that i will become a shoulder for many to lean on it is a goal and it is a worthy pursuit in my life i want to be that person who is the first to wrap my hands around people and say god bless you you can make it i want to be the one that when somebody dies i'm the first person to show up and hold you and say don't worry not to say where was your faith where did you keep no 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 make up your mind that in this life you will be virtuous don't just sit down and say why do men not like me why is this it's not just the issue of attack and it's not just the issue of miracle service could this be where the issue is make up your mind i've taught you you can measure your virtue by how much children love you if children hate you believe me believe me something is wrong do you know why let me tell you this because children will test your patience children will force you to stoop down you see how this my children sometimes after service while all of you are standing wanting to see the apostle they don't care they just come and sometimes they don't say daddy bend your ear and i say look at this but it's training and i'm happy it's better to rehearse through them than to mess up in the future <laughs> are we together virtue character you see people you greet people you do something wrong you say i'm sorry not here eh, what is what is it just in you love people your words are cultured you don't speak anyhow and talk anyhow and say i'm just like that no there is intelligence through wisdom the house is built by understanding it is established through knowledge the rooms are filled is god blessing us i will soon go to the last aspect but listen to this is a profitable way of celebrating valentine it is not saying oh god let somebody send me a gift god is giving all of us a valentine gift this night and the valentine gift is sit down sit down and walk on your spirit are we together yeah it's better than a timeout because what you do will build you and make you exceptional nobody runs away from an individual with such an outspoken manifestation of the fruit of the spirit you become like i would say Bula and Hefzima. there are people who have no regard for elders no regard at all you secure the cause of every old person around you because you do not have that virtue of respect I continue to strive as a person for grace from God I want to be as exceptional as I can be as far as I'm concerned compared to where I'm going I'm just starting I will find them out I will pray them I will study them until it becomes true in my life my only advantage should not be anointing my only advantage should not be revelation you will eventually be the description of God's idea of a man. Can someone have that desire this night? That you will be exceptional. Listen, set a high standard for yourself. Don't just mark your script on an average and set a high standard. When people are saying you are exceptional, you are doing, don't be carried away by those things. Lord, still work on me. In the area of respect, I'm trying, but I score myself with my reference. I give myself 20%. I still need to read a book. I need to go online. I need to study something about character. And you go online and download a message and look at it. I need to learn on this. And you are praying. 
okay let me study esther and let me study Ruth. what was exceptional about these women let me study david let me study solomon let me study isaac and you are building yourself lord make me an exceptional person forget about what is not yet there focus on what god is doing let me tell you it's only a matter of time the world will look at you and within a second was it not the preparation of esther that made her exceptional she passed ahasuerus once once there are times that your destiny will not allow you to pass twice so you have to prepare as though that once is the only time please pray one minute again lord i obtain grace to be an exceptional personality in the name of jesus i conquer the limitation of my background some of us come from families where we have not seen the best model of family life but in the name of Jesus, I make my family life my priority. I make it my priority. And in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I obtain grace from God. I obtain grace from heaven. I'd like you to pray that in Koinonia, we are building families that are exceptional. In the name of Jesus, no matter what your limitation is today, that your 10 years, your 5 years, your 20 years is full of glory, grace, honor, a message and a lesson for the world to see. Exceptional in every way. Someone is praying. Whether you are in a relationship or not, whether you are married or not, lift your voice and pray. Lord, make me. Don't say make my husband. Don't say make my wife. Don't say make my spouse. Pray for yourself. Work on me. Work on my character. Work on that jealousy. Work on that anger. Work on that impatience. Lord, I am not ashamed. This is a threshing floor. I'm not ashamed to be worked upon. Man may laugh at you while God is working on you. But you just continue. It may not be my fault. It may be the background that I came from. It may be the experience I was exposed to. But in the name of Jesus, I kill every excuse. I must be exceptional. I make my family life a priority. Someone is praying. My children will be proud of me. They will call me the first representation of God that they can see. Building me the fruit of the Spirit. Building me virtue. Building me patience. Take away anger. Take away folly from my life. Give me wisdom. Make me outstanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found out if you focus on changing you, God will settle every other thing. Usually, the key is to want your spouse to change. The key is to want your whoever you are going out with to change. But the key really is you. The more you change, you begin to provoke changes around you. It's a principle. Stop sitting down and reporting your spouse to God and reporting your spouse to everybody and saying, this man, after I gave him five children, is not, yes, he may be wrong, but find a reason to change. There is a way you become so exceptional, it becomes unfair for life to give you certain things. Listen, ladies, let me tell you, there is a way you will work on yourself and build yourself. It becomes unfair in all honesty for certain kinds of people to come to you. Don't sit down where you are and say, I can't marry this kind of person. Me, I'm this. By what standard? Same thing with the men. You can't sit down where you are and just say, I, I believe that only a big... No, sir. Work on yourself. When it is respect, you are there. Character, you are there. Wisdom in communication, you are there. Diplomacy, you are there. Leadership, you are there. Hard work and diligence, you are there. Patience and temperance. Forbearance and forgiveness, you are there. You gather these virtues and they make you exceptional. That is the inner beauty the Bible talks about. Greater than outward beauty. Greater than outward six-pack and being a macho man. Real virtue that lasts. Your face will wrinkle with time. Your hair will fall with time. But your virtue remains seated. Let me find somewhere to run. You would.
thank me for what you are hearing. It may not make sense now. But be exceptional and see. It's not only your husband that will celebrate you. I promise you. The whole world will stand before you. Whether you are a counselor or not. Whether you are a mentor or not. They will come to you. And say I want to be like you. I have observed your life. And have observed that you are an exceptional woman. Here is a thousand dollars. Here is five hundred dollars. Can you pray for me? Whatever made you exceptional. You cannot carry nonsense. and want the world to celebrate you. Do not want people to only come and celebrate the anointing and celebrate revelation there should be more and so I challenge you to join me in that strife of dissatisfaction do not clap too early go back home and write a list of the things you must work on don't be ashamed see let me tell you the moment you become ashamed of growth you will never rise to certain levels i do not want to meet the kings of my destiny and have a reason to be ashamed because i had anointing i had revelation but no virtue that the opening of of your mouth becomes a communication of wisdom some of you impatience has cheated you some of us anger has cheated us some of us foolishness lack of wisdom alone identify those things and pray them if you need to read books buy books jordan is here get books you can go on youtube that is the legitimate ground to load your phone and go on youtube and say for the next two weeks i'm going to study about exceptional women exceptional men it in your heart and God looks at you it's not your fault you came from a background where your father was not the best model of a man your mother was not the best model of a woman maybe it was even a polygamous family maybe it was even a dysfunctional family somewhere you can't be crying forever because of yesterday you must summon the courage to say look what I did not eat may my children eat the joy they did not have If you succeed in ministry and fail in family, you failed. If you succeed in your office and fail in family, you failed. Are we together? The last and we're done for tonight. I pray that what I'm sharing tonight will be worth your time here. The third most important priority in your life is your assignment just give me a few minutes and we'll pray we're done for tonight your assignment asks us a question why remember the first your relationship with God remember the second your family remember the third your assignment Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 prophecy about Jesus in the volume of the book look at me koinonia it is written of me to do thy will oh God I didn't come to roam around the earth escorting people in destiny for 50 years 60 years 70 years and living sad to the grave Dr. Miles Munro in his lifetime said the richest place is not the gold mine in South Africa, not the oil mines in the east. That the richest place, the wealthiest place is the cemetery where dreams that were never lived are there. Where destiny is books that were never written. Lives that would have been changed. Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me write this down please your greatest fulfillment 
will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. I will take it again. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. Your greatest fulfillment will not come from cars. Truly I tell you, it will not come from houses. It will not come from your ascending the highest echelon of your profession. As good as that is. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. The morning I was in Delta State, I think, when Dr. Miles Munro went to be with the Lord. When the announcement of his death happened, he was headed for a conference somewhere in the region of Bahamas. And then they announced that he was dead, his wife was dead, his assistant dead, most of the people, about six of them dead. Do you know Dr. Burroughs, who now heads um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International, he looked and he said, continue the conference. He said, if Miles Munro were alive, he would say, never cry for me. So let's do what he would have wanted. I said, my God, men who cheated death, they were so visionary. When he died, they checked his documents and they saw different books that were still in progress. And some of those books have come out now. Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. These are men who cheated death. Listen, let me tell you, you can immortalize your impact. You can, you can choose impact to popularity. Popularity is not the same as impact. Popularity is many people knowing about you. Impact is men being changed because you are alive. Do not mistake popularity for impact. Thank God for popularity, but I will give it up a thousand times for impact. Listen, many of us right now, God is speaking to you and saying, get back to where I started with you. I started with you. There are dreams that have died. Many of you, the way God started with you, the spirit of God continues to cry. It is important to find your purpose before marriage. It is important to find your purpose before money. Because all these things, as powerful as they are, they can tilt you out of purpose. The first dealing of God in my life was purpose. Then the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then the kingdom. Then finances. Then it continued like that. I thank God for that sequence. Purpose. The first major book I can remember reading was Discovering Your Purpose. Miles Munro. I read that book and I remember crying. I said, Lord, I will die empty. 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 Why should I live full? completely empty like a drink offering you poured your life sometimes when people see me and say apostle are you not tired i say at this age while i have the strength to move i will move while i have the strength to talk i will talk i will give my best because someday i will not have that strength someday it will be our children reading our legacy when they look they'll say once upon a man a time there was a man called apostle joshua selman we should be able to look from heaven and be proud of what we did. You are not called to do everything, but you are called to do something serious. And it is, listen, you have to make up your mind to wake up on this Valentine night and say, in the name of Jesus, I will have to wake up to my destiny. Every time I come for Koinonia, as soon as I come out of the car, I look at all the people and sometimes tears fill my eyes. When I travel to go for ministrations, and sometimes you cannot imagine how tired I am, I just stand and I pray. I say, Lord, I don't even have the time to pray. Just show me your mercy and show me your grace. Visit your people. Thank God the, 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 the message I've prepared. Sometimes I do not even have the time to revise it and all of that. I just say, Lord, I give you all the praise. And sometimes I'm so tired. 
and I'm tempted to say, what is all this about? Then I just remember, ah, spending your life bringing glory to his majesty. This is what we do. You don't have to be in ministry to do it. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for money. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for fame. Fame is important, but it's mundane when it stands side by side with impact. If nobody knows you, listen, Matthew Seller lived about 767 or 69 years or so. 969. And nobody can remember anything about him. And Jesus lived for 33 and a half years. And the world cannot forget you. There was a woman called Anna the prophetess. The Bible does not tell us so much. Except that her assignment was to stay in the temple. And pray Jesus from heaven to earth. And when she saw it, she said, now let my soul find rest. I have seen the consolation of Israel. Listen. You know your impact by the vacuum you create when you are not there. If nobody misses your absence, it means your presence is not a blessing. This is true. Purpose gives meaning and value to everything you do. Write it down, please. Purpose gives meaning and it gives value to everything you do. Marriage has a purpose. Money has a purpose. Children have a purpose. Prosperity has a purpose. Let me tell you, the real issue with this our generation is that most of our desires are not connected to purpose. We want to marry for marriage's sake. We want to make money for the sake of respect and pride. We want a name for ourselves. Most times people come, I want anointing. What is the purpose tied to it? Purpose is what gives your pursuit for money. It is purpose that makes your pursuit of money not materialism. Because now there is an object behind it. Every time you want to do anything in life, ask yourself why? To what end? Acts chapter 26. Let's look at Paul's manifesto of his purpose. We're going to read the first 18 verses. Be patient with me. We're rounding up. Then Agrippa, this was Paul before Agrippa. Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for yourself. And then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Read on. I think myself happy King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, as touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Uh -huh. Especially because I know you are an expert in this and that. Go to verse 7. Verse 7 please. It says, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God, day and night, you know, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Right? Read on. It says, why should it be taught a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. Now, he's talking about his history now. Are we together? Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. This is the past of a man. And I punished them often very in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceeding mad, exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Uh huh. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus, everybody look at this, with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Uh -huh. We are reading to 19. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the hebrew tongue saul saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecuted uh -huh. but rise and stand upon your feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose i have appeared unto thee for this purpose 
what is the purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto you delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I shall send thee to open their eyes it's an assignment and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me where upon O King Agrippa that's my prayer for you I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision listen every time you do not leave out your assignment you cost someone somebody's destiny will suffer when you do not rise to what God has ordained for you to do are we together what is your purpose and your assignment your contribution to kingdom advance the role you have been mandated to play in that thy kingdom come project that universal project of the spearheading of the influence and the power of god now please look up not everybody as far as purpose is concerned will have a pioneering grace not everybody will be a general overseer not everybody will be a man of God. Not everybody will be an apostle, a prophet, and all of that. But your assignment is to find your role. It doesn't necessarily mean you must have a platform to your name. The most important thing is your role. The role that you have to play. Let me tell you, there are many purposeless people that continue to loiter around the face of the earth. Waiting for either a job or marriage or geographic relocation to give them a sense of meaning in their lives make up your mind Lord what did you bring me here to the earth for I cannot be escorting people all around for others God can tell you like Moses have raised you to be a savior for others God can raise you like Aaron and say hold the hands of Moses while he performs that function for others, you will be the 70 elders that your spirit will come upon. For others, you will be the Joshua's. For others, you will be the Esther's who need to rise to the throne. Esther's assignment was first marriage. Her victory was dependent on marriage. Are you seeing that now? It, that is the reason why it is important to find out purpose before marriage. Because if you now find out that your purpose contradicts what you are now doing, you are in trouble. God will have to make do with what is there. Is God blessing someone here? Our society is full of idle people. They wake up in the morning and they do not do anything. And I say this respectfully, especially for the gentlemen. There is, there is, there is, there is nothing that pinches my heart like seeing a young, vibrant gentleman confused and wallowing in purposelessness strolling around in the morning not knowing where you are going there is nothing that is worth your waking up there is nothing that is worth your sitting down what are your plans for today nothing is there anything for me uh, okay let's go out and you you can't live your life like that you close your eyes you find out you are 40 years close your eyes again you are 50 years close the last one you are 60 years every time I celebrate my birthday it is this one vision I have my piles of books from the time God began to speak to me and I open them lo I come in the volume of the book it is why when I sit down sometimes when I sleep I just get up and say Mr. Man you have messages to prepare there are lives that need to be changed stand up quickly there is work to, to be done oh there's some prayers to do because there is a meeting to attend and there are destinies depending on you. Shabakatosia. Change them, oh God. Lay your hands and say, Lord, show me. Show me. Show me. Reveal to me. What is my role in your program? I'm tired of escorting people up and down, left, right and center and not finding a basis for fulfillment. Someone is praying. What is my role in your program?
Listen, look up. A few things and then we're going to pray. Please look up. Did you know that your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates? Do not forget this. Your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates. There are people who are workers in this ministry today. But the grace upon them, tomorrow they are going to have their churches. Tomorrow they are going to have their parishes. But in this season, their assignment is to be faithful as far as working and learning is, is concerned. Are you seeing that now? Yes. Nothing gladdens my heart when I have to talk with the workers and sometimes I see the leaders and I see them committed in doing something that is worth it. Listen, it's a cost to wake up in the morning and not have a justification for spending your day. You wake up in the morning, nothing to do. So what's my today about? I don't know. You watch movie, you go on internet, you come back and watch movie, you go on internet, you read a book, gossip here and there, sit down, eat food, go out, come back in the evening, yawn yourself to sleep. It's a useless life. You must make up your mind. Visionary people have to beg sleep to wait. Sleep, wait. Give me two more hours. Because what is burning in my spirit? Do you know sincerely, let me tell you, there are times I wake up in the morning and the last thing I can remember is, okay, I woke up, maybe I went to bed by five, I wake up around nine and I'm busy. I, and the next thing I'm checking and it's nine in the evening. And I'm like, my God, what in the world is this? What in the world is this? I have so much to do. Before you finish learning and writing and praying and doing all of that, you want to pray, you close your eyes, time is gone. But for many of you, because of lack of vision, you pray for five minutes, there is no burden on you. Are we together? Nothing that compels your prayer. Lord, I thank you. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the Rose of Sharon. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my parents. Thank you for my loved ones. I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Of course, that's all if you, if you are not a visionary person. But there are times that praying for koinonia alone can take you a whole day. You take the departments one by one. Lord, worship team. Shaka bakutu siyada. Give them songs from heaven. Give them visions from heaven. Take another department. Before you do three, the whole day has gone. That food is kept in front of you and you cannot even remember that there's food in front of you. If there is nothing that has that grip and that obsession on you, it's a sign you are not living a visionary life. Believe me when I tell you, after service now, I'm seeing people here, when I go back home, it's not sleep. Oh. Sleep? I receive an average of 500 to 600 text messages every day aside from calls and some of them are you and you are angry that I don't respond to it right now my phone my phone is never off never never except maybe they are removing the the, 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 the battery or something maybe changing sim or something it is never off because of the noise of the pressure and the burden of ministry the last time i had music from my phone like ringtone was 2012. i put my phone on silent permanently till tomorrow what do you think ministry is what do you think leadership is ah god is just lifting them please receive grace to be serious in the name of jesus christ 11 o'clock you are already sleeping the last thing god told you to do two years ago is still there you've not developed it you are not reading any book i hope you are not angry no book on your table nothing on your laptop i check your phone and all i see is just browsing and gisting you mean you don't do any other thing please receive grace to settle down there are some of you, what you need to do now, the 5,000 God bless you with, use 2,000 and go and buy CDs and settle down. Make up your mind, I will not sleep, I will not wake up later than 8 o'clock for no reason again. Buy an alarm clock in the market. Are we together? That's right.
myself you must be disciplined for the sake of your destiny myself you must be disciplined this unnecessary hunger that distracts tell yourself in the name of jesus i'm not fasting but i will buy a drink food be disciplined the sabbath was created for man and you study okay today i'm studying on faith and you don't let any devil distract you you are reading on faith you listen to three do you know there are people who are not even workers here they listen to an average of three to five koinonia messages i listen to an average of three koinonia messages every day without fail i'm the one that preached it all and i listen to it again with my heart open there are things if i do not do in a day my eyes will not see sleep please listen i'm opening up my heart so that we'll be serious this thing is not luck you don't get the anointing just by wish no you don't grow into dimensions by saying a season just came do you know the amount of prayer investment it takes to really carry power spiritual power that works there are weeks that i have an average it happens most time in january there was a time i had 18 sermons in one week and you must prepare them my brothers and my sisters i destroy the spirit of laziness from your life this night and i pray for you that one of the things you will learn in this valentine some of you god is calling you into the area of business but you will not sit down sit down sit down buy books read I gave us three books to read. Some of you don't even, you've not even seen how the cover looks like. It's carelessness. When I'm traveling, whether it's to Abuja or anywhere, or almost all through the journey, it is worship and a sermon and something. I don't have that time to waste. I may be as sleepy as whatever, but I'm listening. I can't waste three hours, four hours, five hours. I'm either charging my spirit in worship or I'm listening to something. Listen, life is time tagged. You will not always have the energy and the time. And there is a time when you should have prepared and built certain capacities. Whether you are ready or not, life will open the, the stage. So build capacity now. Don't you know that when you get married, you may not have that time to pray the way you want again because you are now under your own authority. No matter how prayerful you are, so now that you have the luxury to roll on the ground, thank God, don't just keep saying, Lord, when will my husband come? L let me build capacity. I don't know what it means to pray when you are pregnant. I don't know what it means to pray when you pray now. Eat for the journey is far. There are men, you don't know what it means to serve God with pressure of school fees. So now that you are alone, you are not paying anybody school fees. You will write sermons today that you will use for the next 10 years. There are messages I still go back and make reference to them. I wrote some of those messages sometimes 2004, 2005, 2006. I just developed them and build on them. Something must consume your heart. Something must burn within your spirit. Whether you are a man of God or not. Apostle, this is the goal I've set this year. What are you doing? I want to become a sound expert. Tell me what you are doing now for it. Nothing. One day, I'm sure that Koinonia will organize training of sound people. That is the language of carelessness and laziness. I want to become an exceptional mother. I believe it is a call. Show me what book you are reading show me the exceptional people i want to have a great foundation today that will raise great women and great show me what model you are studying now i should come and meet you walking when you are visionary it's easy to say no to many things ah apostle can i come and visit you i'm sorry i'm busy but you cannot you can't sit down people come and say borrow me your television and your visit let me play a movie because you are free completely free i have taught you receive grace to master the night this night time is a good time to sleep but it's also a good time to make spiritual investments i can tell you this for some reason the spirit of revelation is heavy upon men in the night when people slumber around and you are just walking around and just saying lord thank you thank you for the next level 
this year now that there's a lot of expansion and a lot going on in ministry you cannot tell i travel i return i'm tired there are things i'm praying lord let's make sure that we're walking with your will there's a department to meet there are people to meet there's a this and that and that no laziness you can't be eating 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 and you sit down you sleep you get up when you are truly idle you become the devil's workshop I hope you know purpose is not looking for money except if looking for money leads to purpose purpose is finding that which can bring impact to the lives of men that's purpose looking for food to eat is not purpose except if my purpose of eating it is to find the energy to fulfill God's assignment please everybody write Lord reveal to me my assignment in this season go and pray it as a prayer point reveal to me oh god my assignment imagine if bishop oyeriko did not find his place in destiny imagine if papa Ia deboe did not find his place in destiny imagine if fathers like W.F. Kumuyi did not find their place in destiny. Imagine if there were no Benihins. Imagine if there were no T.L. Osborns. Imagine the world without this man. Imagine the world without men like Nelson Mandela. I made up my mind that I would give my best for God and for this generation. Let it be that I did my best. My best, Lord, is everything I have. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. My best, Lord, is all I have to give. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. I wrote this song many years ago as a commitment. It was a vow and a covenant. Lord, if I die doing what I'm doing, that it is with honor that I died for you. For me now to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's not a confession. It's true. That's why I was, hey! I don't panic. I'm already dead. Dead people don't die twice. It is appointed unto men to die once. I will spend this life God has given me serving. You do not know the honor that I have serving this generation and serving the purposes of God. The greatest thank you is not an alert. The greatest thank you is not fame. It's not a name. The greatest thank you is apostle. Thank God you were born. That because of you, my life is changed. Because of you, my father is saved. Because of you, I found direction. Sometimes I hold those things. I'm not a very emotional person. But tears just come down my eyes. And I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for making me a gift to this generation. You can be Barabbas. You can be Jesus. The choice is yours. You can be the two thieves standing, hanging on the cross. Or you can be Jesus. I made up my mind that I will give God and this generation my best. He gave his best for me. I will give my best for him. So when you see me travel and you see me do the things that I do. Oh dear generation, hear me. It is not because we are necessarily exceptional. There is a fire that burns from within us. It is the fire to see the globe set a blaze we will set this generation on fire in a way that has not been seen we will contribute our quota to kingdom come and when all is said and done we will stand like the fathers who have gone ahead of us and salute the earth and make sure that we leave a legacy that outlives us and then we'll wave the earth goodbye with honor be wise in your living don't live like a fool live as though time is passing You've celebrated five birthdays in purposelessness. From the time God started nudging you, wake up. Wake up. Arise!
thou that sleepest it is time to wake up god is calling you to be a kingdom financier you don't become a kingdom financier at 70 it's not a blessing so go and buy all the books on finances not for the purpose of having money for the purpose of having the tools that it will take to minister oh apostle god is calling me to be a man of god that's not the time to loiter around looking for invitations that's the time to fast when others are not fasting that's the time to pray when people are sleeping not apostle they should give me bible study in one church pray that my pastor will see me no that's the time to settle down premature manifestation will kill you God tells you your assignment is to be a man of God's wife. That's not the time to say, where is he? What is your business? You stay and build yourself. Lord, I will need patience. I obtain grace. God tells you you are going to be an evangelist traveling around the world. You should be casting the demons that cause plane crash. You should be praying. What do, what do you mean by there's nothing to do? You settle down and pray. Lord, in advance, I prophesy to the partners that will have to stand by me. May I not be stranded because of finances. Let it not be that while I'm preaching the gospel, my children don't have their school fees paid. I receive the spirit of revelation. I need to preach two or three messages per day. I obtain grace from God. I will be persecuted in ministry. I will be misunderstood in ministry. Lord, build my capacity now so that when those times come, I will not be distracted. My best Lord is everything I am. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all. Valentine give to you. Embrace God. Embrace family. Embrace destiny. And I show you a winner. Many things will come to clamor for your attention. But I show you the things that really matter. When all is said and done, it is God, family, destiny. Not crowd. They will say, give us bread today, king of the Jews. And they will say, crucify you tomorrow. I show you what is necessary and unnecessary. Valentine is only useful when wisdom is added to you. If all you do is to eat and receive presents as good as it is, and you do not have an opportunity to grow destiny-wise, you are not making progress. I prayed over this and I asked the Lord that when I teach it, it will mean something to someone. That you can make up your mind some of you will need to go home this night and just sit down outside with a notebook and start writing things lord why am i here show me the scripture that represents the anthem of my life i cannot wait for marriage to define my relevance i can't sit down waiting for a man to appear in my life so that i will find what i'm here for lord why was i born and you pray from the depth of your heart Lord, you have called me to be a man of God. What do I need to learn? What dimension of ministry are you giving me? And God says, I've called you to be a prophet. I've called you to be an evangelist. And you get books about the prophetic ministry. And you are praying. I've called you to the ministry of help. And you begin to study. Lord, give me patience. Give me forbearance. Give me the grace to love people. Oh, I'm calling you to be a great pastor. Lord, give me the heart of a shepherd. The grace to love people whether they love me back or not. You are preparing for destiny. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hold the hands of someone who are going to pray. My best Lord is everything I have. My best I give all I have to you, my best Lord, is everything I have, my best Lord, I give all I have to you, you made me great, you make me, great. You make me special, you made me special, you made me great, 
from you let nothing take the hunger oh God let nothing steal the passion oh God is someone praying prayer point number two hallelujah Prayer point number two. Now listen, whether you are married or not, our time is gone. But for the sake of God and for the sake of your family, whether here or not, I want you in the next two minutes to cry. Married or not, Lord, I pray for my wife. I pray for my husband. I pray for my children. Prophesy and declare. I decree and declare that my family life will work. Someone is prophesying. Model families. In the name of Jesus. Exceptional homes. By the spirit of the living God. Homes that are a replica of heaven. All wise. Please pray. Pray for your children, born and unborn. I prophesy ahead over them. Champions, warriors, men of fire, women of grace. I separate them from the weaknesses of territory, from the weaknesses of background from the limitations of ancestry I cut them away from the limitations of tribe and geographic territory I craft them into a new order a new spirit a new tribe someone is praying pray over your children they are taught of the Lord great is their peace pray for your home Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endures forever. Pray, pray for yourself. Lord, make me a man of character. Make me a woman of character exceptional exceptional a dispensing of the virtue of heaven regardless my background regardless my past regardless my limitations is someone praying I obtain grace exceptional grace exceptional an exceptional man an exceptional woman skilled and virtuous valuable a contributor to the growth of my home. Hallelujah. Now listen please. We are still praying for family. I'd like you to pray. Lord my children must be better than me. They must be greater than me. 
my children will never be the worst fashion of me where i failed may they not fail where i could not cross may they cross someone is praying be selfless enough to pray may my children become extensions of my legacy please prophesy hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now we're going to pray listen there are many of us you cannot move forward even with regards to family life because when you look at your background dysfunctional family you look at your past it's not a testimony that you desire you look at the future it looks bleak and you allow the devil fool you into thinking you will become just like your parents you are going to cancel it there is a new grace a new wine a new covenant i love my parents i honor them but where they failed lord i obtained the grace of an eagle to rise and move past it lift your voice and pray pray growing up i saw poverty Lord, may I be the one to change it. Growing up, I saw limitations. I obtained grace to change it by the Spirit. I'm a sign and a wonder. A sign and a wonder. Please, I'd like you to pray that in the name of Jesus, your home will stand. In the name of Jesus, your home will stand. No divorce, no separation. In the name of Jesus, you are standing as a model by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. Now, the last prayer point, there's one minute now. You're going to pray. If you're married, you're still going to pray for your wife and your husband. You're not married, you're going to pray. Lord, please bring a man or a woman in my life that fears you let it not be that is marriage that took me down please pray it all and pray it seriously lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus pray pray call forth a husband that loves god that will serve god with all his life a responsible man who fears god call forth a woman of virtue a mother in israel Is somebody praying? Cry unto God, the giver of all good things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. Listen. You're going to pray for purpose. Some of you, from this prayer, God will show you dreams. Some of you, God will make references to books that you have that are locked up in your house. And say, go back and carry that book of 2001. That book of 2005, open it. There is something I told you to write there that you need to revisit. You are going to pray. Lord, like fire from heaven, the blueprint of my destiny, let it rest on me in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cry to the Lord. Lord, let me not escort others in destiny and live a visionless and a purposeless life. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me, as it is written of me, as it is written of me. The purpose for my existence, the reason for the gift of life, the reason for the gift of health, the reason for access to wealth. Open it unto me, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give us one more prayer, one minute. 
And with that prayer, I'll make an altar call. We're going to all pray and then we'll make altar call. Listen, I told you that the highest measure of wealth and fulfillment is peace. Look up. We live in a very troubled world. On one side, there's terrorism. Another side, there's plague of diverse kinds of infirmities. On one side, there's all kinds of family crises. You are going to cry, Prince of Peace. You said you will give me your peace. I need peace in my life. Listen, all this, all this trouble, some of us have become lean because of trouble, not lack of food. Some of us have had high blood pressure at a young age because you are thinking about too many things. Listen, you are going to pray for the peace that gives you rest. Where will money come from? Where will this come from? When will I marry? When will I have a child? When will I have all? Be careful. Those things can eat up your joy and your peace. The last prayer point. Lord, for me and my loved ones, give me peace. You are the prince of peace. Lift your voice. Every fear, every disturbance in my heart that continues to perturb my peace, I obtain peace from you. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Is someone praying? Peace. In the name of Jesus, I receive peace. Peace over finances. Peace over marriage. Peace over my home. Some of you may need to prophesy to your homes. Peace be still. Every turbulence. Peace be still. Every attack. Peace be still. Every wind. Peace be still. Every financial turbulence. Peace be still. Every confusion in your mind. Peace be still. Every noise from society. Peace be still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we have decided as a people to celebrate this moment and this season with wisdom. You have taught us the value of connection with you, our maker and our king. You have taught us the value of family. Lord, for those of us who have not paid attention to family, by this teaching, oh God, would you cultivate a sincere desire to birth families that work in the name of Jesus. We thank you because the marriages in this ministry will work. Exceptional homes. Homes that reflect the power, the grace, and the possibilities of God. And I pray for every home with any kind of turbulence. Peace be still. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I pray, oh God of heaven, concerning our destinies, everything that stands today as a hindrance, let it give way in Jesus' name. Let this message, oh God, be etched in our hearts that even whilst we sleep, it will replay again. In the name of Jesus, we choose the things that matter in this life. We choose to invest our days with wisdom. We choose to leave legacies that outlive us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for giving us the honor to hear your truth. In the name of Jesus. Now keep standing. I want to make an altar call. Please listen to me. Most times when we say altar call, most people just shut down. But tonight... The greatest love, the greatest expression of love was demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. You are here on this night, inside in the overflows, and you are yet to make that commitment for Jesus. You are saying, Apostle, I want this day to never be forgotten in my life that on Valentine's Day, while other years have not been that way, I want this year to be different. Whether you are in overflow one, two, three, please stand, my dear brother. Overflow one, two, three. Uh, well, overflow three, you can just move to the front of your projector stand. 
but as many who are inside i want you to literally run and come and stand here it's my honor to lead you on this day would you dance with me Song of song. Keep coming. Ooh. Would you dance with me, your lover of my soul? To the song of song. One more time. You are still coming. Join them. Please join them quickly. Would you dance with me? says greater love had no man than this that a man give his life for his brethren there are very few people who will be able to give their lives for you but there is one who gave his life for you you make this valentine a very meaningful one when you hand over your all to him he is a true lover that does not fail many may love circumstantially many may love you depending on what you become or not become but there is one who truly loves you. Behold what manner the Bible says of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. I salute you for making this decision. Whoever will come to him, the Bible declares that he will in no wise cast away. Please lift your right hand truly and say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I come before you just as I am. I declare that Jesus from today and forever is my savior my lord and my king i receive the remission of sin i receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and the life of Christ. hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.